She goes, well, there's this one guy who was just openly mocking me and making fun of me for like being a barista. She's like, I knew him from social media. It was the same guy. Before we get started with the episode, we're gonna take a second to hear from our sponsor, ZocDoc. Introducing ZocDoc, a place where you can find and book doctors who will make you feel comfortable and actually listen to you. ZocDoc is a free app and website where you can search and compare highly rated in-network doctors near you and instantly book appointments with them online. Go to ZocDoc.com slash Rebecca and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot -O com slash Rebecca. ZocDoc.com slash Rebecca. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. I've said in a lot of content that Many people need therapy. It's not a bad thing. It's perfectly normal. Therapy isn't just for people who experienced major traumas. Don't be scared to give yourself a chance. And if you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com WIB today to get 10% off on your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash W-Y-B. Now let's get started with our episode. I'm trying to think of how I want to start it. Okay. I can start it for you. Yeah. Guys, this is Rebecca. <laughs> this is her podcast. Hi, Vinny. This camera do I look at? So. In this, whichever this one, one you want. So this you, right? one looks at me, and that one looks at you, oh, okay, and this cool. one looks at both of us. Cool, yeah. This is my so, first time yeah, with that's the, okay. on the podcast. Okay. I, I'm a veteran. I'll teach <laughs> Stick with me, kid. <laughs> Wow, no one's called me kid in a while. <laughs> people, like, when people look at content creators, I know that they have, like, a very, a very specific image in mind, and people kind of look at content creators in awe. And I'm, I'm so excited to really give people a kind of a window into what it really is to do this for a living. Mm -hmm. And I'm so excited that you, like, just on YouTube alone, you have over 30 million followers. Wait, really? Yeah. Wait, yeah, oh, did you subscribe? You? I was at 29.9. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm the 30 million follower. Woo! <laughs> no. yeah, that's crazy. And how long have you been doing this? Since, well, all right, I was on YouTube since 2006. Wow. But from like 2006 to 2012, I only got like a thousand subs. So <laughs> it, was, it was a grind. It's not the same. It's it was not a grind. The same. Uh, yeah, but yeah. then really like it took off at the end of 2012, like yeah. beginning of 2013. That's that that's that's when I kind of tell people. So about twelve years, officially. Wow, that's so long. Yeah. And like, what made you want to start? In two thousand six or two thousand twelve? Both, both, both. <laughs> Give me both so, answers. So, yeah. uh, all right. Because uh, I feel like there's that initial like everyone wants to be a YouTuber, right? Everyone has this dream. That but... wasn't even a word yet. Like really? YouTuber. Like YouTube was just a place that you watched a video. Like there was no. That I don't makes... think. Well, we need to find out when you the word YouTuber was coined. Like, I don't know. Avery, lawyer, get on that. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I joined, like, this, like, uh, they call them, like, cell groups. They're kind of, like, care groups. Like, people were just there to, like, mentor you, whatever. But it was focused around photography because every, every group had a theme. And it was all photography. And these guys were doing, like, stop motion but with, like, pictures, you know, <laughs> just, like, fl like yeah. flipping it sort of thing. And uh, I was like, oh, my God, I want a camera. So for my 14th birthday... I got an SLR, not a DSLR, because it wasn't digital. It didn't have it yet. <laughs> the digital ones had, like, just come out and uh, were really expensive. So I got SLR, and then from there, like, I had always been taking photos. I was doing things with that camera that could have translated into video, but didn't have the software, didn't have any of that stuff. Yeah. So I was born before my time. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> so I had always, like, had a camera. As soon as I was able to get the digital camera, I just started recording. Like, all the, like I was vlogging before... It was, a was real, a, yeah. vlogs were really a thing. Right, and um, I had nowhere to put that stuff, right? Because there was right. not really anything. Um, at the time, I think there was Google Video, but you couldn't, at least to my knowledge, you couldn't just sign up for Google Video. It was like professionals, like documentaries, oh. how-tos. I think it was something like that, right? And then that was 2005. I don't think YouTube, or maybe even 2004. And then YouTube came out, and then they they turned in I think Google Video or something like that. I was absolved. ten at this time, so yeah. I don't know. <laughs> You're like, I don't remember. Uh, anyways, long story I short. Was 10. Long story short, YouTube came out and it was like 
upload your own videos now. It's like, oh, cool. Like, it, I remember, like, being able to, like, hey, I can finally upload something. Because I think at the time there was, like, mp3.com <laughs> and, like, maybe MySpace. And it was just like, what, what am I going to no, no one was following for vlogs. Right, content, right, right. So one of my first videos on YouTube was, um, was rap like rapping making rap songs for 106 and park i had my daughter on my lap and i was just sitting there doing a freestyle because that's where i kind of started doing hip-hop yeah. stuff and from to like i said from 2006 to 2012 it was majority like music videos raps and then i tried to do skits and like 20 that, like i didn't start doing like skits and like personal like talking to the camera type stuff till 2011 because everything okay. before that was just music and uh and yeah and I, so i had been doing it just not every day not like i'm gonna be a youtuber one day right just for fun i didn't care about that yeah um the <laughs> <laughs> Most of I don't I don't know if I ever talked about this. I might have talked about this like one time, but I had one video blow up on YouTube and I think it was I recorded it and posted it in 2007. <laughs> so it's kind it's kind of weird to talk about it, but like 2007, but I think it blew up in like 2010. It had the 170,000 views. Like it was crazy, right? Right. Never showed my face. It was bad lighting. Like it was just goofy stuff. So my daughter um, you have kids? No, okay. I have cats. So, you know, <laughs> when you have your, you know, your babies, you like blow raspberries on their belly yeah, or whatever. Yeah. So, um, I was on a bed and my, my wife is there and I'm blowing raspberries on, on my daughter's belly and my wife is recording. But while she's recording it, I was pretending like I was farting. And the joke was, so you don't see a baby. You just see like my butt <laughs> shaking and like, it's kind of weird. But, and then she like pans over and then you see that it's like raspberry. So there's the punchline. Like, it's like, oh, it's just like, right. what did you, you guys thought I was farting? You guys are gross. Like, it was, it was a joke. So YouTube was like, congrats, your video's wildly successful. You can put monetization on it and I'm like oh shoot monetization this is cool let's apply like I had to apply and then it was like your videos vulgar and disgusting and we can't show ads on it I'm like I'm blowing raspberries <laughs> 2012 my son Mike who was uh four at the time uh -huh. he had he had been watching YouTube I'd never I didn't watch YouTube like that he had been watching it and uh he said <clears throat> He's like, I want to make a YouTube video. And I was like, okay. Because he had seen me always making YouTube videos. We made a couple like skits together just for fun. He's like, I want to make one. I'm like, he's like, I'm like, what do you want to do? He's like, I want to show my Skylanders collection. It's just toys, right? And at the time, I was like, all right, well, let's do it. Because any, I mean, my kids ask me to do something, I, I always do it. That's how I've always been like, let's go do it. It's never like, no, like, let's do it. Uh, and then we did it. We, we, we lined up his toys on our little ottoman. And he's like, my name is Michael, and this is my Skylanders collection. He's just showing off his toys. Like, nothing crazy about it in my head. I'm like, this isn't going to, like, nobody's going to watch this. No, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm sitting here, like, I, I, like, before monetization, I spent an entire month every day for one month, not like five days, nine right. to five, every day for a month outside of work, like to like three in the morning, I was editing a music video for a month straight, just passion, wow. no money, like just like for fun, right? And so everything I do, I put passion into. My son makes this one little crazy little video showing off a couple of toys. He made that one video, we put it out, he was watching it on YouTube. So now he's watching his video thinking like, oh my gosh, like, this is so me, I, like, this is so cool. I'm, I'm looking at me now, right? I was wa I'm watching other people and I'm looking at me and then we just forget about it. Months go by, we look at the channel and I'm like, yo dude, like your video got 10,000 views. Like, that's this is cool. crazy, right? And he's like, wow, wow. I was like, do you want to make another video? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, so what should it be about? And he's kind of telling me about this game that he was in love with called Skylanders. That's what the toys were all about. And, and I had played it with them and we started thinking like, oh, well, what if we show like this hack that we do? Like we found this hack where you could put like two toys on the portal at the same time, whatever it was. And we made this video. And this time I was like, now that you're getting views, let's give yourself, like, let's make the channel official. Like, let's take a picture of you. I turn it into a logo. Like, his second video out, he's got an intro, logo, everything. And this is 2012. There was no parents back then being like, right. we got to get on YouTube, right? Yeah. It was just like, yeah, it's this just for is, fun. yeah. And so I'm like, all right, let's do it, but let's do it right. Everything I do, I like to do it right. The right way. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Uh, we, we did this, we put out the video, and instantly, like, it was like, you know, upload. It's not like now where you upload your schedule. Right, like, it was like, right, yeah. upload post. Like, yeah, we're not yeah. waiting. There's no, we're not doing tags. No. We're not doing a description. Nope. We're just posting this. And I refreshed the page. This was the first time I seen videos, uh, video views go up this quick. Like, immediately, wow. it was like 30 views, 50 views, refresh, 80 views, refresh, 100 views. And I'm like, what's happening? 
What is actually happening? This is 2012. I did I didn't watch YouTube. I didn't know anything about YouTubers. I didn't I hadn't made I think but maybe like 60 bucks at this time and that was from like just in like the entire 2011 it was probably like $60 just on like hip hop stuff and, and I'm seeing this and I, I don't know I don't know anything about YouTube channels about the like kids channels I don't know anything about Skyland I don't know any of that stuff and I just see that whatever we did worked and I'm like Whoa. what's happening what and I was is like, this? so like right away like I saw that and I was like no delay like should we do another? And he's like, yeah, like he loved this. Like the passion that he had for Skyland was just so unmatched. Oh. And so the third video, we're like, all right, bet. Like, let's like, what should it be about? Come up with it really quick. We put it out. Views again, instantly. I'm like, so it's not a fluke. Like the, I thought maybe it was just some weird thing that happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm like, people are actually subscribing. Like people are actually people subscribing. Like They're it. commenting. And I'm like, what's happening? Like, I, like the feeling was just, I just, I like, I can't explain it, and I'm trying to think, like, once you get that initial feeling, you, you, you can get glimpses of that as you continue, because you, like, you'll break barriers, like, if you always get 100k views, and then you get, like, that 1 million, you're like, what? But right. this was, just, like, there's it's never been new. another you feeling. Al you yeah. always have that, like... <clears throat> It's so, it's so hard to describe it to people that haven't experienced it. Like, that moment that you realize, oh, wow. I can do something with this. Yep. Have I ever told you how I started social media? Mm -mm. I was a high school social studies teacher. And I was like a 22-year-old. And like half my students were seniors. So wow. I was 22 teaching. Teaching like 18-year-olds. 18 18 That's great. Right. And so I was very strict about my boundaries. I had to be. But especially wow. with social media. Like I didn't really. I, I've never been one. I've never really watched YouTube. Like what my year brother. Was this? The year that I started social media was 2020 so this was my second year teaching gotcha i prefer teaching freshmen but there were a couple of years that i still got the seniors it, they're fine yeah <laughs> they're, they're fine i was um, never a senior in school so i don't know what it was like really yeah i left in 10th grade <gasps> but i did like homeschooling and like um i actually had a like a part-time job in my own office when i was in wow grade, but. i was very strict about like my social media i mean i had kids that were like miss rogers come to taco tuesday and i'm like no yeah. we're not friends I'm even surprised when, the school allowed it they they uh, to me to teach i mean who else yeah. is gonna teach you know I guess. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's like three thousand like you can't even drive a car like a rental car till you're 25 but you can right. teach 18 year olds yeah. at 22. yes, yes. <laughs> that's such a good point <laughs> yes i didn't even think about that Yes. And so, like, even when TikTok came out, you know, I would always hear my kids, like, talk about it. I would hear it in my room. But, like, I wouldn't even download the app because I was just so yeah. determined to not, to, like, just have those barriers and those boundaries of, like, I don't want to know all the things that they're joking about. Like, yeah. I have my own way to connect with kids, but I don't need to, I'm already too much in their world. Yeah. I, I need to remove myself. Yeah, there has to be a balance. So, like, my first year teaching in 2019 when TikTok was, like, first becoming, like, popular, like, didn't pay attention to it, didn't, you know, just tried my best to stay away from it as much as I could. Once things, like, shut down in 2020, the next fall, I had all freshmen so, like, there was a little bit more of an age gap. It made me feel a little bit more comfortable. And the kids were so sad. Like, naturally, like, everything was locked down. They were mm. stuck in their houses. They hadn't been into a school in months. You know, they weren't going to for God knows how long kind they of thing. They didn't get their eighth grade dance. Right. They didn't. They really did <laughs> yeah, it. I know. Oh, I didn't even think of it. Yeah. So it's my, yeah. My, 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 yeah, my, my, yeah, your daughter. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I've never had issues connecting with students before. And this was, like, I was having my own little identity crisis about, like, they don't want to talk to me. They don't want to, like, participate in class. I've never had this You're happen before. No, well, like, I, I know I'm not their friend, but I've never had no, issues it. of, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so I tried so many things. I tried bonding with them over sports. Do I look like I know anything about sports? No. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't. I don't. I just started <laughs> learning about basketball. I don't know. Like, so I'm playing with my son, Jason. He always stops me. He's like, you can't do that. I'm like, what did I do? See, I got I, the ball and I shot it. I know the rules because, like, I did, like, school cheerleading. So, like, oh, I, yeah, I yeah. would sit there and watch. I can't tell you how many basketball games I've watched. Really? But, like, I don't love it. Yeah. I don't enjoy it. Like, I don't like watching sports. I don't know anything about the teams or the yeah. players. So I would ask Avery. I would ask my husband, like, gotcha. hey, or 
that didn't work. So then I tried animes. Okay, I know that high schoolers like animes. I don't watch I animes, never got into that. but my husband does. Okay. So I would have him tell me like all the things that he knows about all the it's animes. It's Naruto, not Naruto. No, <laughs> like, I don't even know. That's or probably backwards. He doesn't love One Piece, but he loves like the Seven Deadly Sins, or like like he Avery loves animes. I did think that that new One Piece was dope. I've something. watched Avatar, The Last Airbender, but people told <laughs> oh, me I thought you meant the one with the blue people. No, 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 no. Like, no the, the, like, the... Yeah, the, the guy with, like, the little wind yeah. symbol on his head. Did you never watch Avatar? No. Get out. <laughs> Absolutely not. Anime didn't really work either, so then I was like, okay, and I, I was like, you know what, the, the freshmen are <clears throat> far enough removed from my age. You know, I'm now... Yeah. 23 yeah. they're 14 that's almost like 10 years so i asked them i was like hey what do you guys think if i like downloaded that tiktok app and immediately <laughs> they were like oh, yes and they thought it was going to be so cool and so fun so i let them pick my handle they picked our rogers world because they're like miss rogers uh, it's really your cool. world and we all live in it and i'm like you get me <laughs> <laughs> and i just did appropriate trends that they picked appropriate trends that mm. they picked um, until one day, this one girl said something so ridiculous in my class. She said, Miss Rogers, are the languages of Mexico and India similar to each other? And I said, <laughs> mm, why, what, why, no, you but fail like, as a why, teacher? Would you, why would you ask that? But she goes, sure. well, you know, I just figure because they're so close to each other, wouldn't they have similar? And I said, Oh no! And all the kids were like, "Miss Rogers, you have got to make that into a skit." And I was like, "Okay." <laughs> so I made it into a skit, and a lot of people liked it. A lot of people thought it was really funny. Like it went, that like, one went viral. Mm -hmm. Oh really? And I was like, "Oh, okay." Well then, then my kids were like, "Oh, so if I say something funny or dumb in class, you'll make it into a skit, right?" And that opened a can of worms. <laughs> <laughs> that was That's like, what I was gonna say, like with no, kids no and like more. their parents, like you've embarrassed my child. Well, I actually never had that because I, okay. I never made a skit about a like. Since then, I never made a skit about a kid that I had in my current class that I didn't get their permission already. Yeah. That they didn't say it was okay, or like if there was an issue. That's still risky because the parent can be like. Pressure. Well, I, I always, pressure from Miss Rogers to bully my kid into submission. Well, there was, there's no, so it was always <clears throat> like my face. So no, I never yeah, had my, yeah, I yeah. never had the students in it. I never ha used their you real don't say names. Their names. Yeah, you're no, good. I always, use, I made. Two I could tell you're married to a lawyer. <laughs> Three characters. I had Connor, <laughs> Kyle, and Jessica. So Kyle is like the troublemaker kid. And Connor's more of like, I'm rolling my eyes at him kind of kid of things that he does and says, yeah. you know. And then Jessica is more like a goody two-shoes. And so like no matter what situation I had, I had, you know, three little characters that I could interchange their, they each had their own identifying thing in a skit. I wasn't using kids' faces. I wasn't using kids' names. If they did something hilarious, um, I'm and they weren't like, make a video out of it. I would wait until they either weren't in the school anymore or graduated or not in the county. Sorry, I just, I just, I just keep picturing, like, you're having the camera set up on your desk and you guys are all doing a TikTok dance and the principal walks in and is like, what's going on? No, I never filmed during <laughs> class, ever. No, I know. It's there was, there was one time, <laughs> there was one time my kids were taking a test and it was all virtual, right? Um, it was all virtual. So I was literally alone in my classroom. And I played one of my TikToks just to like look and see it. And our kids go, Miss Rogers, we already got to hear you talking. They're all throughout class. We don't need to hear you anymore. And I was class like, today we're learning I, about I analytics. Didn't, I didn't realize <laughs> that I was. This is history, Miss Rogers. I didn't realize I wasn't <laughs> muted. I was like, oh my God, I'm so mortified. Cause like, you know, like it takes, it takes a lot to really get used to hearing your own recorded voice. That is something that like is so, was so cringeworthy to me for so long. I didn't even know that you really could make money with social media mm -hmm. until I wasn't even eligible to monetize on YouTube until like the week that I put in my notice. And I didn't even oh, put wow. in notice because of monetization. Oh, interesting. I, uh, and I, I've told the story in a few episodes before. And it, it's so funny because... You didn't know how little they paid, right? Well, <laughs> well... time, TikTok? Oh, I, it was YouTube. It oh, was, it was YouTube. This was YouTube monetization. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, gotcha. So gotcha, the gotcha. shorts bonuses were oh, more than okay, my okay. teacher salary. Gotcha, And gotcha. it's so, it's so yeah. funny because, like, go, being a teacher, knowing, like, you know, 
I had a friend whose globe still said like Czechoslovakia on it in the USSR, mm -hmm. countries that like don't exist anymore. Um, we didn't have enough textbooks for kids in our class. So like seeing the kind of money that existed in like the social media world mm -hmm. was really hard for me to wrap my head around because I was like, where's all this money coming from? What? What is this? How is this happening? Like, I wasn't even crazy big on YouTube yet. I think at the time, I started YouTube the March before, mm -hmm. and this was now September. Mm -hmm. And I think I was at, like, 100K oh, wow. on YouTube. Like, it was very quick for me. It all happened very much So overnight. you were waiting on those watch time hours? I didn't even know that you could monetize. Oh, I okay. had no idea. Oh, gotcha. They just started the shorts bonus, which you don't got need to it, be in it, the partner program it, for. It, okay. And basically, the shorts bonus originally was like, if they've determined you're a YouTube creator who is consistently posting shorts that go viral, mm. there was no rhyme or reason. They just picked people for the short for the shorts bonus. Like you either got picked or you didn't. There was not really a rhyme or reason to it, kind of thing. I didn't even know it was a thing until like as I was quitting, I just got an email and they were like, "Congratulations." You've been picked wow. to receive a shorts Crazy bonus timing. this year, this month. Yeah. And every month you either got it or you didn't. And it wasn't, it's so funny because people, especially like other teachers at the school, and even some parents were like, oh, are you quitting for the money? And I'm like, I don't even know how long this will yeah, continue. Like, I don't know if there's longevity in this. I went through that too. Obviously. I don't know. I think everybody does. Uh, yes. Well, that, that's, that really is a reality because like people always talk about the money in social media and it is really good, but there's no security. Yeah. Like you could say something wrong tomorrow and it's all gone. And then what do you do? We kind of had an issue like that in 2018. Yeah. yeah. Really? Um, We're going to take a quick break and hear from our sponsor of this episode, ZocDoc. You know those family members that corner you at family events? You know, the ones with all the questions? Yeah, that one. And while many of us grin and bear it when it comes to our family, no one should have to do that with their doctor. Introducing ZocDoc, a place where you can find and book doctors who will make you feel comfortable and actually listen to you. ZocDoc is a free app and website where you can search and compare highly rated in-network doctors near you and instantly book appointments with them online. Listen, for those of you who really follow me on other platforms, you know I've had a weird year medically and my doctors haven't really done me justice. That's why something like ZocDoc feels so important and logical. I can't wait to find a provider that won't forget to refer me to that specialist that I really need. Go to ZocDoc.com slash Rebecca and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot -O com slash Rebecca. ZocDoc.com slash Rebecca. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. What's the first thing you would do if you had an extra hour during your day? Call a friend, read a book, watch a show. The best way to squeeze that something special into your day is to know what's important to you and make it a priority. Therapy is something that can help with that. I've said in a lot of content that many people need therapy. It's not a bad thing, it's not an insult. It can be very helpful. It's perfectly normal. Therapy isn't just for people who experienced major traumas. So whether you want to get better at setting boundaries with people or empower yourself to be the best version of yourself, don't be scared to give yourself a chance. And if you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash WIB today to get 10% off on your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash W-Y-B. Now, back to the episode. Yeah, in 2018, you heard of the adpocalypse? Mm -mm. And then there was the kid apocalypse. You haven't heard of it? I, I, this was, 2018, right. you, so, I didn't do social, media, social media yet. Okay. No, I, I wasn't even like watching content. PewDiePie created the adpocalypse, mm -hmm. and Spider Man and Elsa created the kid apocalypse. Okay. <laughs> what, is, what are those things? <laughs> They're a, a massive loss of revenue for YouTube, which then, of course, trickled down to a massive loss of revenue for content creators. Wow. I don't want to say the figure, but it would make people throw up. 
we yes. didn't make money for five months on YouTube at around 250 million views a month long form. Wow. For five, six months. Wow. No money. And that was because we got caught up in the adpocalypse and could not get help. I was so upset, like, how can I have no control over this? And it was... It was just upsetting to see everything I had worked for just start to like deteriorate. Right, and you don't know if there's gonna be a, a rebound. Like at the time, I didn't it, know. You, ha you have no idea if it's gonna start back up. Am yep. I done? Do I have to start looking for another job kind of thing? Yep. And I think that there, there are so many issues and so many things that go into the content world that so many people just really don't understand. Like on the outside looking in, yeah, it looks like it's all sunshine and roses and like just the best thing ever. And like this is a, a, a very privileged opportunity, mm -hmm. you know? Like I, I wouldn't trade this career for anything. Yeah. But at the same time, it is still a job. And there are things that go into jobs that really make you want to rip your hair out at night. Of course. And like I, you know, as, as a teacher, I know how hard I work during virtual learning. Now, I've always been an overachiever. I just want to say, it is easier when you love the job to yeah. go through the Oh, my gosh, yes. Versus not loving the 100%. job. 100%. Yeah. 100. I just want to say that for no, that is so important. <laughs> that's so important yeah. because, like, I, I think that's, like, the big thing because, you know, so many people, I want to be a YouTuber. I want to be a content oh, creator. Yeah. I want to be an influencer. But so many people who start posting content because they're like, I want to be an influencer. Mm -hmm. Their passion is being an influencer. It's not in the content. And I think that's why so many people who like really aren't trying are a lot of times the ones who end up doing well because that passion and the joy is what really shine through. But that you is know? the story of every OG YouTuber. Mm -hmm. it, that's the story. It's literally, they will all tell you that. Like, it's really hard for people to say that now because sometimes it's just stacked against them because you, social media is in your face. You do see yes. it. You do see the benefits. You see when people get new cars, new houses. You're like, oh my God, like, I want this. Right. And so whether whether or not you, you understand it, to some degree, it, it can influence people now to where it wasn't even able to influence people then because it right. wasn't a thing. So yeah, I, I get that all the time. I try to, I try to warn people that all, all the time. I have many people that I've talked to, friends, family, friends of friends, and even people that have said like, oh man, I posted every day and blah, blah, blah. And I only made, I only made six cents. I think is the, I think if I'm remembering what this person said. And I was thinking, there's your problem. You just brought up money to me. Don't, I don't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hear a single, I get it. I right. get it. But I don't want to hear it Ex because it's just yes. not that, that if that's your motivating factor, you're going to be disappointed because exactly. the money does not come like no, this. No, no. And if you're only doing it for money, a lot of times people could sniff that out because yeah. there's some family channels out there. Oh, I don't want to, I want to say it. Yeah. I want the big, big family channel out there. So fake, man. Let them it's just like, oh, you, so you just know it's like, bro, like, well, that's the I thing. can't wait till it's your like, kids grow up and have stories and they're going to tell us. Like, <laughs> that's the thing about social media like and like obviously like you know no names like the goal isn't necessarily to like get people in trouble but yeah. like I've had my own share of people who huge on social media that I've met in person and I'm like oh I don't like, like I don't like the so a social media friend majority of times they're not a regular friend yes the conversations are different it's it's and and the people oh, the just the behind the scenes stuff I've heard at VidCon and Playlist. Popular people in, in, in TikTok with 30, 40 million followers hear them whispering certain things you're like, oh my God, you're, like, you're, no. you're a sucky person, bro. So, like, um, and I, I'm going to keep names out of this. Yeah, I know. Like, sure. so, I would but, love to be Cat Williams no. right now, but <laughs> Kevin Hart, you know? But like, <laughs> so, I'm not going to do it. My first year at VidCon, I didn't have Avery with me. Um, so I was there by myself with a bunch of friends and like I definitely think there are a lot of social media friends that I have that I would consider like a real real friend but there are also friends I have in social media that like are a social media friend yeah, yeah. like there's definitely a distinction there is so I, w I was with some friends and we were in line to go to this um, after party kind of thing and out comes like a very 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 large content creator
and some of my friends were like fangirling over him a little bit um and they they it was so funny one of my friends made the comment of <laughs> they, they like to so these friends of mine they like to self-deprecate a lot like they make jokes at their own expense and they're just so funny <laughs> and one of them said oh he followed us once but then i think he actually saw our content and unfollowed very quickly <laughs> And like they're very they're also successful content creators and it was just it was funny um, But they were laughing about that. So this guy um, I guess he knew one of our mutual friends and so he came and just like cut the line which whatever like he was coming to sit with his friends It's not the end of the world um, and introduced himself to it and just hey, how's everyone doing? And we just said hey, and he just started joking with some of us and so because it was like a light-hearted thing I thought I would also make a joke and I said hey I heard you uh, followed my friends. You unfollowed them. I They're guess like, you thought that they were. Well, they, they loved it. They okay, thought it was okay. so funny. No, I wouldn't have made it if I knew it was gonna make them. Okay, see, they're, sometimes I, they I don't know it. when I should or should not say <laughs> things, and then they're like, "That wasn't a good one." I'm like, "It wasn't." No, this is why I don't live stream. <laughs> No, they, they thought it was funny, and I was like, I, I hear, I guess you saw their content, you know, we were just telling them, you know, ah, you, you're not that funny, guys. <laughs> and, and, and I was like, oh, I guess, you know, like, kind of like all of us, but they just know us personally, so we can't get away with unfollowing them. And he was, they, everyone thought it was funny, like, it was just a joke, they knew I was joking, and the guy goes, oh, I'm sorry, my guys, and he goes, let me, let me just go ahead and follow everyone. So he pulls out his phone, and he starts, like, passing it around for everyone to, like, find and, like, everyone follow each other. Well, the moment it gets to me, he snatches the phone out of my hand, and I was, and, like, he doesn't say anything, and I'm just, oh, okay, whatever, like, and my friend wow. was like, oh, that was kind of weird. Okay. Like, what happened? I'm like, I don't, I'm not going to beg someone to follow me or be my friend. Like, okay, that's <sighs> fine, like. Whatever, we weren't meant to be friends, that's okay. So um, we get into this little building. I have been waiting in that line for 45 minutes. I'm like, I need to go to the bathroom. So I immediately go to the bathroom. And my friend, just like, it really bothered him that that happened. So mm -hmm. he asked him, he's, hey, my guy, like, what was that about? Know. You know I, what? I, I, I like when people. Yeah, he, I, when he, he, this is a very loyal, very loyal yeah. human being, like a very good friend. He's, that was, that was kind of weird. Like, did something happen? Like, what? And he goes, oh no, my God, that's how you got to keep the ladies interested. Like, you just got to. <laughs> You gotta keep them on their toes, man. And he goes, <laughs> Avery, thousand miles away, had a spidey sense like something's wrong. <laughs> he goes, Are you talking about Rebecca? Oh, I think you might have the wrong idea. He goes, No, no, no. I think she likes me. Oh God. And he, my friend goes, No, no, no. My dude, she's like very happily married. She's just very nice. <laughs> and he goes, Oh, she's married. Oh, f that. Like, oh, absolutely not. That is not. the her. That is mm -hmm. the exact thing that I had he heard multiple creators say uh -huh. behind the scenes about other creators, and they were like, "I swear, Fuck one of her, them was like, man. unfollow. I promise yeah. you not." Mm -hmm. He goes, 30, 40 million followers on TikTok, and I'm like, "You, that's what yes. that's what it's Crazy. about." And I'm like, oh, God, so how I'm, sad is your life that that's what the yes. follow was about? Apparently, he then cussed me out to him <laughs> oh and then just God. walked away. And that's when I came out of the bathroom, and my friend's face is just so confused. And I'm like, what? He goes, I don't know what just happened. And he told me... It's a better compliment. I ended well, up <laughs> in the moment, I was like, I, I, I have since apologized to my friend, but for a moment, I was like, you've got to be exaggerating. There's no way. There's no way. But hey, then the next wire? day, <laughs> literally the next day in the hotel, there was a Starbucks. And so we went and got coffee because it was a little early in the morning. And in line, the barista just looked visibly upset. And but it was actually it was actually Tarzan that asked her like, mm. "Hey, are you okay? Like, are you doing?" Oh, all this right? was twenty twenty three, twenty twenty two. Twenty twenty two. Yeah, okay, I was this there. Is, is that a little yeah, yeah. for after, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We got hot water so we can heat up our ramen. Yes, there. <laughs> yes, yes. Tarzan's the one that asked her like, okay. "Hey, um, are are you okay?" And she goes, "He's such a good dude. He's so sweet." <laughs> and she's like, "Well, there's this one guy who was just openly mocking me." And making fun of me for like being a barista, and he's like, what? "Who was it?" She's, I don't know his name, but then she started describing him and his content. She's like, "I knew him from social media," and started describing his content. It was the same guy, wow. the same exact guy. And I'm like, "Okay, 
my friend was not exact. Okay, this is just a not a good person. And like seeing the kind of people who praise him on social media for being so nice and yeah. such a good dude, and blah, blah, blah. And like just seeing the way that he treated people. For me, it never, it never dawned on me that you could make a, like a persona for the camera. Yeah. Because for me, like I've always genuinely tried to just be me. Like it, it just never dawned on me to be someone else. So that's actually gotten me in trouble with other content creators of I assume they're this way because that's how they present themselves online. And then I meet them and I'm like, now I'm sad and crying because you're not, it's well, not, that's not the case. I know. And I get that. And it's funny because sometimes I've had kids come up to me and say, cause you know, if I'm gaming, I don't, I don't game like this. Like, right. Like when I game, I'm like, nah, what's up, yo? Like today we're doing, but there's a difference between high, right? like, um, but, 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 up the energy, but I've had you know? kids come up to me and I talk to them they're like, I'm a big fan. I'm like, what's up, man? Nice to meet you. And they're like, why is your voice like that? And I'm like, like well, what? Like, can you talk like how you do in the videos? I'm like, buddy, if I talk like that all day long, I, I would, would have be no exhausted. Voice. <laughs> like I'm a, a, going to a restaurant, I'm like I take the steak. Let me get that rice. <laughs> like no, like that. That's like that's and then you you can you can see too is like um, I think it's hard to find your voice. Though. I will say like I yes. think some people. There's a lot of people that are funny and cool in real life, and then they turn on the camera and they're awkward, they're corny, and it's just like, yeah, this isn't working. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's also the flip where it's just like, like me, like I'm naturally, I'm naturally mellow unless there's something happening, happening, or there's people around. Like, but that's still but, like you, like that yeah. your your online presence is still a part of your real genuine. Yeah, yeah, not yeah. So that's just like figuring out like what I am I supposed to do. So I get that, but like mocking baristas and that stuff and then no also, that's just gross behavior there's so many there's so many many like p there's so many social media creators that i've met it's just turned me like it's actually turned me off like don't put me in the same category as that person i've come to the conclusion that like i pay attention to how someone describes themselves if someone describes themselves as an influencer nine times out of ten that's just not my kind of people, and that's okay. That's fine. I, I hate but, when people say I'm a famous, a celebrity. No, I, are you I a celebrity? hate the word. No, dude. I'm, Wait, I tell everyone. I hate that word. I'm a dude with a camera. I always say I'm just a weirdo with a. I'm just an awkward lady with a camera, man. Like, and, I, and, it, and for me, like it's weird, right? Because like, like my self worth has always been like I feel like kind of low. I always bullied as a kid and this and that. And so like growing up to like have fans come up to me and be crying, it's I'm just crazy. like crazy. Why are you crying? I'm not I'm that just great. A weird I'm dude. not awesome. Yeah, and like I've, I'm just, I had to tell him like, yo, don't put anybody on a pedestal. Like we're all people. Like I don't like the f word. Like I, I've had people ask me, uh, like when my husband meets people, because I don't really leave my house anymore. Because yeah. I'm just, I'm working all the time, and yeah. that's like another thing that we can get into. Yeah, like, yeah. I work, we both, we no, work all the time. <laughs> but when Avery goes out into the real world and like meets people and they're like, oh, what does your wife do? And he explains it. And they're like, oh, is she famous? I hate that word. Yeah. It makes me so uncomfortable. I don't like it. I would have like a rule that like, I would ask people don't, say like don't, don't say that don't word say what i do no don't even talk about what i do like my previous assistant i'd have to ask her like don't tell people who i am what i'm doing and she broke nda and she literally would tell everyone and oh, i just no. found this out recently from multiple sources i'm just like what was the point of that no. like just because you think it's cool like i'm just a person like i exactly. want my privacy i want you know whatever but um yeah no i don't i don't i don't get down that's why i for a long time, I stayed out of the scene. I, I never went to any influencer events up until like recent. Like at, once COVID happened, I'm like, I should just break out of my shell, and meet people, and I started meeting people. I'm like, these people suck. Like I don't want. <laughs> not you're cool, but like Avery's cool. Yeah, um, yeah. Like, no, Tarzan, like good dude. Like yeah. I mean, a lot of people that are good people, but for majority of people, it's hard I don't to find be your, your people. Friend. It's really it, hard, and it, that's that's why like my circle that I found in social media, like I'm so protective over it. And I'm so like, especially over the last few years, because I've talked before about like the issues that I've had with my previous projects and people on it. And so like I now have to be so hesitant. And I know that you do too, because even when Tarzan first introduced us, he's like, it's going to take both of y'all a little while to know that you can trust each other, but you're good people. <laughs> like me personally, like I'm not even interested in like having a circle. I'm cool with just, you know, as long as I have my, my fam, like that's most important. And, and I don't. Outside of like 
my family, like, I don't have friends. Like, I don't have, like, I have, like... your friend, Vinny? (laughs) (laughs) No, but, uh, (laughs) but, like, I have, like, I have, I have, like, one amazing friend who will always reach out to me several times a year, and I, like, I'm just that person, like, I don't, I don't text people. I'm not good at texting either. Like, my own dad is like, I wish you'd call me more. I'm like, I'm sorry, dad, I love you. I promise I do. It's just like... You get so busy. Well, I'm just like consumed, like my own life. It's just like, in the kids, just daddy, 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 right? And and even when they don't do that, like, I don't want to be on the phone. Like, I'd rather go hang out. Well, like, like, when when most of what you do is on the computer and on the phone, like, like how many hours do you work a week? Yeah. uh, At one point, it got up to... Man, like, I, I want to say 80, but just to be safe, I'll say 75. At a, at a minimum, like, Avery, Avery and I t- are looking at, like, 60. Because, like, yeah. editing takes so much time. Planning, like... And, and then that's... And then I'm, when I say, like, working, I'm talking about, like, in my office yes. on a computer. Mm-hmm. But then when you leave the office... You're still... The brain doesn't yeah, shut no, off. Like, never I could off. be at dinner and everyone's talking about nice, normal things. And I'm sitting here like, man, I should have moved that camera to the right a little bit and caught that better angle. And they're like, Daddy? Daddy, I'm like... Yeah, 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 yeah. What happened? You got... Like, my kids get... My kids naturally it has nothing to do with social media it's my personality that like my brain's always in a million places yeah so so many times my kids will say to me like daddy always like i'll ask daddy a question and then sometimes he doesn't respond right away but then he says he's he repeats what i asked him but then asks me to repeat it and then and i'm like but why do I do that? Because I'm giving you the attention that I need to give you and I want to answer your question versus I got a lot of people in my family and I see another family where the kids talk, the parents don't answer or they push them to the side or they just whatever. And that, that piss, I'm sorry, but that no, pisses yeah, me yeah, off. Yeah. And so like I told my kids, hey, the flip side is I just don't answer you or I give you some <laughs> crappy answer or I could say I'm sorry ask me again you have my undivided attention because yes. we need to do this and so like when i say that then like okay all right i'll I stop i'll stop complaining about daddy <laughs> i i have to do to avery all the time he can tell you like he'll say something but i you are always your brain is always yeah, on the no, job and, and so i'll have to say to him like i heard you but my brain didn't register what you just said yeah can you please repeat your question yeah. like at least four times and, a day and people should appreciate the heck out of that because there's a, there are people that don't do that. That don't. You know? They're like, I didn't hear them. It's yeah, fine. I, I, I've been, a, I've had a lot of answers. Just like, yeah, 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 like some crappy, like yes answers. I'm like, you didn't even. You have no idea what I, I just what asked I said. you. No. You know. It's, it's not even just the people in social media that like really just ruin it for the rest of us. But yeah. there's also, you know, like I, I like going. I personally like going to the YouTube events. But I'm just a people person. Yeah. I'm not. I like to be around people. Like, you know, I was a teacher. You know, I'm used to being around people all the time. I'm a, more of an extrovert. Um, I always call myself like. An What's that vert that's like in extrovert? the middle? No, no, oh. the vert that's in the middle. I say I'm an introvert. There's intro. Extrovert. Uh, no, there's like a name for it. <laughs> I just I learned know. that like dinosaur vert. No, I don't know what it I is. It's know. something stupid. I call I it just an, learned it. I call me an ex- an introverted extrovert because I'm I can be. I think in, there's a name for that. Though. I can't be I'm wrong. gonna find it. I'm <laughs> gonna find it. I will. We will find it. Or someone in the comments can tell us. They always let us know. Down below. They always let me know. Like, subscribe. <laughs> but I watch the whole video because if you don't, you can get bad AVD, and then you're not a good person either. <laughs> Like, I'm, I'm really, I like to, I need people time, but I'm also very comfortable not leaving my house for three days. Mm. Like, I, I can do my me time, but then I'm also good in social situations. And sometimes I do, I do crave, like, human interaction other than yeah. Avery, who I yeah. love very much, but sometimes I need to talk to more than just Avery. Yeah. But, like, the one drawback to some of these events is that so many times, like, I try to introduce myself to Everybody, especially because I've been like hosting with YouTube a lot lately, so I want to like be I get a good anxiety. host. I can't. I love it. I hide in a corner. But I, I, the, I've been getting the same questions constantly, and it makes me feel so guilty because I don't know how to answer to some of these people because hmm. a lot of them are people who are just starting on YouTube or just starting to get into it, and they want to know what's the secret. Mm. What like like I, I feel like people genuinely believe that there's a secret button yeah. or a secret formula or something that we're all just hiding well, from them. And Jimmy, there's... Mr. Beast might have one of his own, <laughs> but that's the only secret that exists, and apparently it's just for him. I think it's like Illuminati driven. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but well, like, the rest of us social media. We have media no creators, idea. 
Yeah. We're not in the like, Illuminati. We, we don't have secrets. We don't know either. We're just like, we're just as confused I, about how all this works as everybody else just is. Just recently, I've been saying the algorithm gods have favored me. <laughs> they, they favored me. And like, I feel very, they've bestowed upon me the good luck. And like, I'm very thankful and fortunate for it. But like, I, I never realized how many people genuinely believe there's like a secret. Or if you talk to the right person, they'll hit a button yeah. or a flip a switch. I always welcome people asking asking questions about social media because I love to help and I want to be helpful and like I don't I think gatekeeping is really gross so like yeah. I never want to be gatekeepy sometimes I just don't know how to respond to the people that like genuinely just think that we're hiding a secret button or mm. like hiding a secret and we're not like I don't know how any of this stuff works either but like in addition to um people like some content creators and influencers kind of making the sphere a little bit more hostile and harder to navigate there's also like the content industry is so unregulated because it's so new yeah. that it's like it's so predatory because like just about every other business that exists that's like, oh, we do this for content creators or we provide this service like you don't need any of them yeah. really. And like I know so many of my friends that have been burned and have lost like tens of thousands of dollars of of money like real revenue for their families cuz so many of these companies are so so predatory like yeah. i know one one of my friends she had a manager who come who you know obviously what her what this manager did for her was just focus on brand deals so would um if she had a brand approach her she would send it to them or they would also try to get brand deals from themselves and they would work the contract negotiations they would be like the liaison and she just had to make the content and she had a brand deal for thirty thousand dollars and you know they told her hey this is going to be like a, a net 60 meaning that you won't get your money for like 60 she days did. after it's completed because that's just how like the taxes and things work like that. And so after two months, she's like, okay, hey, I haven't gotten my payment from them. Oh, we're having issues with the contract. We're having issues with the people. They're having some turnovers. Four months later, she just contacts the brand directly and is like, hey, I'm having trouble. Like, what's going on? Yeah. Uh, we have a contract. I'm getting really frustrated. Like, our brand deal, our partnership, it, really, it went really well. The video's doing well why are you refusing to pay me? And they're like, what are you talking what about? That? We paid you four months ago. Like, we didn't even I've wait for the net like 60. Yeah. And so this company just stole her $30,000. Come to find out, they were doing that to five or six other creators as well. What they were also doing was, like, the company would say, hey, we want to do this brand deal for $15,000, going to the creator and saying, hey, they want to do this for $10,000. And then oh, just pocketing well, the difference. That goes on probably, like... Five out of every ten brand deals. Always, uh, it's yeah. crazy. Well, yeah, look, my manager, he, ha he like he knows that. Like, I get paid and I cut him twenty percent. Yeah, it's like the moment I get paid, I'm like, bro, invoice me. I'll pay you like later on today. Like, I I have like a net one with everybody. Like, I hate owing people, mm -hmm. so when I owe someone, the rule Here. is like they're they're paid like today. Like, we don't we don't right. Wait. I and also get really anxious about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If I owe somebody a dollar twenty seven, like I'm giving you a dollar twenty seven. <laughs> like I know you might want two bucks because some people would give the two yeah. bucks. I'm, like, I'm I will giving you what I'm like a fair person. I I know someone else who like a, a completely different management company wanted to do a 360 deal. And for those that don't know, it's not just so what they were doing was helping with content direction, helping with content planning, helping with creative everything. Um, and then also doing the brand deal stuff. So their deal was 20% of all brand deals, but also because they were helping with content stuff, 20% of, of AdSense yeah. from YouTube I, I, and of Facebook and of TikTok. And so they did I've this for a like lot. a year, a whole year. And their views were down. The content direction was not helping. It was not going in the right direction. And then at the end of the year, she just got curious. And as she was getting all her tax stuff together, did the math and realized that if she, first of all, did not get any brand deals from this company, all of them came from her that she had them liaise on. And second of all, realized that if she never signed with this company, 
she would have made an additional $20,000. There's and so that many. that it all There's just so came out from their like cuts. That. And I can't even imagine on TikTok all these small creators are getting $300 yes. deals, 500 No, they, small. they, they, it's so predatory. Yeah. It's so predatory. Yeah. Or like, um. You know about Machinima? No. So Machinima was one of my first MCNs and I don't remember exactly the exact. I don't know if it was 50-50, but guaranteed, um, it was like 60-40 split for a lifetime. Like, they, they were wow. signing perpetuity <laughs> contracts with creators that for their entire life owed Machinima a no. huge chunk. And it, they, they went through, like, lawsuits about it, but it was, it was insane. Like, back then, 2013, I think, is when I got my first MCN. I, I had friends all locked into 60-40s. Wow. I managed a 100-0. Like, since then, like, and they were like, you can't talk about this. We can't let people know you have 100-0. I'm like, all right. That's so, it's so gross. And, oh, yeah. like, there's also all of these, I, I've been seeing a lot of these companies Especially that are, Especially because they like, don't do much. No! They don't even like, do much for you. I, like, a 95-5, you want to take 5%? Cool, but you better make me, like, an do, additional right, 30. <laughs> right, Like, if, you, if, if, if you're paying someone out, yeah. They should be doing something for you. There's no reason that they're just free riding and getting part of your revenue that you're working for. If you're making the content, you're doing the planning, you're doing everything, yeah. what are you paying them for? Just to say that you have a manager? A lot of it was like the vanity. Kind of like, oh my God, I'm signed to the same place that Markiplier is. Oh like, it was my like... gosh. I feel like the content world, so many companies feed on and take advantage of the fact that content creators like oh you can say you have a manager yeah you can say that you have this representation or like i've seen a lot of these and most of the um, times i hear my manager does nothing no i have not met many people out of all my content friends i've met one that i'm like are you happy with your management and they're like yeah yeah. One. I know a lot of people in the content world. I like my manager. So He's I watching. I know He's two. amazing. <laughs> Just saying because the reason why I like him is like even from like the jump, it was kind of like I don't want no pressure. Like, yeah. like if 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 I get the whiff that like we're gonna do anything just for some cash grab, like I'm out. Mm -hmm. I, I I've never done cash grab. I can't do the cash grab. And he's just so chill, and it's the best. And and before him. I, I really only had one other management company. Well, it's then. not even just yeah. managers. I've been getting so many emails for so many different companies that are like, if you pay us this amount of portion of your YouTube money, we will dub all your content into other languages. Do you know how many apps the will do AI that? The AI will do that for Yeah, the I AI will do that. I, YouTube is partnering with like this one company called Aloud who does it for free. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons that like not being gatekeepy is so important to me. And like it's, it's really the teacher in me because I know yeah. that there are some people who are like not concerned about it. And that's totally okay. It's just the teacher in me that's like look out for everyone and make sure that people aren't getting taken advantage of. Like, you know, that's just my personality. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the reasons that I love when people r come talk to me and ask me questions. And I would love to share all of my knowledge about social media. Like, no, I don't know everything. Yeah. I'm still relatively new to this space. Mm -hmm. But like, I'll tell you everything that I do know because I don't want to see management companies taking $30,000 from you. And I don't want these comp you to get locked into deals. Like, there are... There are these co other companies that like look out for content creators who are starting to thrive and starting to rise and that, hey, we see that you're starting to become very successful and we think with your trajectory that you will reach X, Y, Z amount of income in the next 10 years. Mm. So what we'll do is we'll give you a lump sum at the very beginning yeah. and then we get all of your YouTube money for the next 10 years. Yeah. And they always I've never heard understand. Of 10. I've heard of five. Um, I've been seeing ten. ten. Is crazy. They always make more money than what they give you, but then also like. Well, they have to because that's part of the business. Right. Well, that's exactly that's part but of the business. But how much though? The first offer I got, oh my god, it was horrible. And then finally we we landed at something that I was okay with, and then um, that was for five years. Content. They offered me. I can tell because I never took the deal, so mm. I can tell you what I was offered. Okay. I was offered two million dollars. Wow. For ten years. Ten is crazy. Ten. Ten's crazy. Why would I do that? Like I, my life is so different yeah. today than it was two years ago. Ten is crazy. Even five years ago, I don't know what's going to happen gonna in ten years. The pitch is like you don't have money, and we got it for you. And we're going to help because you have some crazy idea, and you need this money to explode. I will say the. 
the one of the first deals, like I did one of those deals and it was it was good. The second time I got offered a deal, it was at like 60% less of the of the valuation from the first deal, which is already a, a huge chunk less than what you would have made in that time period, right? Yes. But the, the point is you're unlocking cash sooner than later. Right. So if you're doom and gloom and you think the it world's going to blow up. It's not up, for everyone. Like right, it might work know. for some people. If you're just in content just for the money, like yeah. it's not going to work long term. No, not long term. But at the same time, like when you don't see any kind of return, like when you decide, okay, this is going to be my job and this is going to be my career. Yeah. And you're putting in those 80 hours a week. Oh, yeah. 10 years without seeing any income from that no, that's crazy that like I can't imagine what that would do to like motivation because I already burn myself out a lot it does demotivate you yeah yeah cuz it cuz it did like the the after I after I did one of those deals I was simply like man I don't want to even make content right now cuz I'm like I miss like I miss like I miss what I have, like it's not mine right now. And you know? it's gotta feel different from like, I'm making this content because it's what I do and it's what I want to do versus I'm making this content every day because I'm contractually obligated to. That's definitely a problem that people will, will run into. Some people are just like, who cares that I made this content in the past? I know I'm gonna keep making content and I know I'm gonna make bigger and better things. And in the case of like Mr. Beast, right, he spends so much money on his videos right. that- uh, It might make sense. It might make sense for him. I don't even have one of those deals and sometimes I just burn myself out. Like, yeah. like even yesterday we were just talking as I was literally driving to this city to come batch record some of these podcast episodes, I looked at Avery and I was like, I'm not feeling any motivation to do anything today. Like I'm just, I just feel like I can't. Over the last however many years you've been doing YouTube, yeah. have you ever felt like you wanted to quit? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, oh yeah, of course. I, if anyone tells you they've been doing YouTube for 12 years and they're like, yeah, I've never wanted to quit. <laughs> <laughs> they're lying to you, and if they are in your friend circle, cut them out because <laughs> you can't trust them. Okay, why? What made you want to quit? Oh my God, <laughs> where, where do I begin? I'll say the biggest thing that a lot. Uh, I'm sure every creator. No, no, I'm sure. I will guarantee that every creator that has achieved some level of success, they will always be upset when the views don't hit. I don't know how many other creators can actually say this. I'm not trying to brag or be prideful, but I honestly stand by that statement is I don't know any other creator that for 10 years, almost 10 years straight had a steady upwards trajectory. Nice. And that was us for almost 10 years. Like we were number one in gaming for like, th like almost three years. Like, wow. like no one touched us to feel always so confident and like, oh my God, like 10 years, like this is amazing, everyone loves us, this and that, to, to go like this, to then now, like we've had a pretty significant decline since like 2021. Yeah. And now I'm at the point where like, who cares? Because there's more to life. Yes. Um, but and, sometimes and that initial easy. shock, yeah, like. Yeah, the initial shock is hard. And yes. I will say it's, it's when you're when you're new and just getting started, one, two, three, four years, that could be devastating. Yes, I've been fortunate enough that for ten years and forty billion long form views, I, I don't like financially. We don't need to worry about anything. Right. So it's just like, well, if you don't want to watch my videos, don't watch my videos. I'll go live my life then. You know. It's right. Like, but I know sometimes it's not even the fans; it's the algorithm. They're not pushing it. They don't. People don't get it. But I know it's out of my control. That's that's what I have to right, keep yes. constantly telling myself. It's out of my control. But when that first started happening, like it's it's not getting the views, the videos don't hit. It's like what's wrong? And then you, you like for me like you look at it like all right, like you were already like as a kid like bullied and not liked by many and this and that and then it's like oh what well, people aren't liking me right and that and it's like what like what am i doing wrong what's wrong with me even sometimes with social media creators we meet certain creators and i feel like they wouldn't like me and you, I, I would take it personal because i'm just like you know it's like childhood flashback type stuff right but anyways um with the views it it, it becomes demotivating sometimes so you're like you know what i like wh i don't why am i gonna make right content why am I working 80 hours it. this week? Because, right. Yeah, and I've always said, like, man, if people, like, if the views stop, like, if, the, if they don't continue the same way, like, I'm done. Because I'm not going to be that loser that used to get 100 million views on videos and, like, every video, 20 million views, and now I'm only getting 
less than a million, I'm not doing that. But then I got under a contract and I was obligated. And that's kind of where I'm at right now where like the views are so low. It's like, yo, I don't, I'm not going to do this. Like I like, I like, I, I like it and, and I've always loved it. I had the passion for it, but it's also helps when people want to watch. Right. So you're like, yeah. I want to give them more, but when the views are whack and, and people aren't watching, it's like, Yo, if you don't want to watch, I'm good. I can go do other things with my time. Right. I would still create, but I don't want to create on the schedule where I need to do two videos a week. I need to have yes. one vlog a week. That's what I don't like. That's what makes me want to quit. I could never n quit completely yes. because this is in my blood. I've been doing it before it existed. Right. But the obligation to do it is is sometimes not fun. And also because... I don't like authority. <laughs> and so like, <laughs> to feel like I'm obligated to do something, there's a sense of like this authority. It's like, who are you, man? Like, this is my life. Right, you know? right. And so that also, like, that's the defiant nature that I naturally have, like in me that wants to battle that. Um, and so, yeah, sometimes it's just, it, it, it's, it's that like that feed the beast, the algorithm. Like I need to do this because if I don't, like I've been, like everyone's been there. Like, you know how many times I've heard a shorts creator saying, I need to post three times a day because if I post three times a day, that's when the algorithm picks it up. And I'm like, it's so forced. I Let post four. You post four? Mm -hmm. But do you do that for a reason? I, um, Are you yes. feeding the beast? You feel no, like you have to I, or no, you want to? Because there's a difference. So I do, I do four videos a day, yeah. but I do four completely different kinds of videos a day. I'm not so knocking the, that. No, I'm no, only no. knocking if, if, if it's like, if it's, if the algorithm has a, no, a yeah. Opposed to your head saying, do this or I won't give you views. No, no, no. That's I, what I'm talking I about. I don't necessarily see it as that at all. Like, okay. I'll post one podcast clip a day because I'm like, oh, I want to promote the podcast. Yeah. I'll do a skit a day because I know people want to see skits. But yeah. then I'll also post, like, so I'll do, like, a podcast clip, a skit, a, like, a lifestyle. Because I, like, I, I don't ever want to just be that lady that does skits. Or I don't ever want to just be that lady that does, like, the watermelon filter That's what, that, I've. So like I will, into the choir. I will more so make myself do like a little funny five second thing with a filter on TikTok because I'm like, I want my personality to be there and I want to be more than just the lady with the clown makeup filter or, you know, like the lady that cries about not getting paid enough at a teacher job, <laughs> like, you know. So Maybe like, all teachers should just have short form, uh, <laughs> you know, they should be signed up for shorts and TikToks and that's how they get their true salary. Well, now not with the uh, county, the county's <laughs> will the county make them monetize now. <laughs> yeah, they just need but, to turn on that green screen filter. <laughs> well, we I, can see a smidge of brick back there. <laughs> and the filter went out at 30 seconds and 49 milliseconds. That, uh, you need a ring light now <laughs> so that it doesn't break it up. So like you felt like you wanted to quit when your views were down. Y yeah, definitely. hundred percent. And even like, I'll be honest even right now i'm like i need to change something like r what i'm doing right now is currently i feel like it's not working and i am in this mood where like i don't i don't want to do it listen listen if y'all are not gonna if whoever's watching it if y'all aren't gonna watch my gameplay videos i don't want to make them because i yeah I, I can create other content right like yeah i really want to do like documentary stuff like, I, and, oh, I, and, so and that cool. really came about when i posted a documentary last year of course it was a personal you know uh conflict or like a, a not not tragedy but it was something that happened to us that was negative we got robbed in hawaii and they oh, got 30 wow. million views on the documentary and people loved it and i'm like man i would love to watch i would love to create content that's like long form like that and compelling to get people to want to watch but then i realized but i can't be getting robbed all the time though because like <laughs> So if I don't get robbed, are they still going to want to watch it? But back to the whole, like, other times I've wanted to quit. When you had, at one point, like, 14, 15, 16 employees, and I, me, I'm trying to make content, uh, review everything multiple times because I have to put my eyes on everything, right? I'm sort of a control freak, but also because I care. Like, this is my yeah, baby. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And, like, I, I, I care. That's why I do it. I know content creators that make content and they don't even review the final piece of content before it goes live. To that, I say, you're doing it for money, most likely. Yeah. Because you don't care enough. And I know several that do that. And to each his own, I could never. Like, I like my, like, the main two channels, I could never do that, you know? Right. Um. But so I think sometimes too, like having so many employees and people coming to me for things and, uh, and then trying to also have a family and then some, you know, some time to create content, it became very hard to manage. And, um, that, that was, 
it's like, I, how long can I do this for? How, yeah. like, how can I, I'm very like ambitious, want to like try, try new things and I'm, I'm safe with it. Like I'm conservative. Like I don't want to take crazy risks, but I want to try new things. But I would want to do so much. It's like, it's just not possible. Like I, I was the, the best at long form and the, the number one YouTube gaming channel for almost three years That's straight. Crazy. But it came at a cost of my sanity, my yeah. health. It just, it just wasn't so many work hours, right? Yeah. So much goes into it that they don't get to see that behind it, the scenes. It, yes. And there was a point when it was so frustrating for me to like, to, to manage all of this. Cause like, not only do you have like employees and day to day and in-house stuff that you have to manage and, and everyone's coming to you asking questions and like you have to help guide them and get them to where they got to go. Then also I have the vendor, not vendors, but I have outside companies. Yeah. I'm doing licensing deals. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to lawyers. I'm talking to the CPAs yep. and, I, and I'm doing all of this. It's just me. There's yeah. no one else helping me do this. And I'm the number one YouTube gaming channel on YouTube. And our vlogs are also killing it. Like we're doing 500 million views a month, long form for years. And then wow. when we go to COVID, it's a billion long form. To all that pressure just on me. It's a lot. It's a lot. And then I, I would get upset thinking like, man, I would hear about YouTubers like how this person, you know, has their brother-in-law helping them and this person's mom helps them and their dad and then this person, husband and wife duo and this and that. And I always thought, well, there needs to, it's good to have some separation because I think like sometimes, you know, you can, you're going to, if you work so closely with someone, you're going to be, you're eventually going to butt heads, right? Yeah. And so there was times when I'm like, I wish I had that. And I'm like, no, you know what? I'm glad I don't have that because then what would it do to the relationship with that, you know, with that person? And that was just my thinking, but it was, it, it would become, I would get frustrated that others would have that. I would get frustrated that I didn't have it. And then I get frustrated that, oh no, I don't want that. There was just never like a clear, there was, like, I didn't know what to do. I feel that so hard. And, and then people would always tell me, then you, you just gotta, you just gotta cut back. You gotta calm down. I'm like, yeah, how? That's not. I'm number one. <laughs> do you understand? Like, I, like, I didn't plan for this. Right. I, I never, I was not like Mr. Beast when he's like, I'm going to be like, oh, uh, uh, you know, he's going to be big one day. And I'm not like Logan Paul. Logan Paul's like, I'm going to be the number one entertainer in the world. Good for you, buddy. I never wanted that. I never said that. Right. But I got it. Once you got it, I'm supposed to like give it back. Yeah. Like easy. Like just like, eh, just take it away. That, to me, that was like, no, like I, like I accomplished something like this is crazy. I was grateful. I see a penny on the street. I don't know about now because of fentanyl, but I'll still pick it up. Like, but, like <laughs> a year ago, a year ago, I'll still pick it up. And people are like, you pick up a penny. I'm like, bro, don't like I came from like, I didn't have anything growing up. I wasn't born into a rich family. I would want toys all the time. My mom would never buy me the toys because she didn't have money because she was a single parent cleaning houses. I would go with her to go clean the houses. So I appreciate everything. Like my kids, they think I'm crazy when there's like a, you know, a drop of orange orange juice left. And I'm like, don't throw that out, freeze it. We'll put it in a smoothie. Like, it's this much. I'm like, I don't care. You, you can enough. do something with it. And so like, I could tell people that I could explain it to them. I've hired employees that have been responsible for spending money. And I'll explain to them how to spend money. And they're like, what's a budget? I'm like, no budget. If I tell you I need this, I need it. But I need you to make sure you've exhausted your search. You found the best deal. And, and then I have employees that spend $1,000 on something. Why'd you spend $1,000 on that? Well, I figured they, they would say, people would say stuff like this. Well, I figured you made enough money on this brand deal that it wouldn't matter. I'm like, that's none of your no. business. Yeah. And that's not how you shop. That bothers me because I'm like, this is my money. And you're supposed to be spending my money. And you can't even, right. you can't even do that. You can't that. do that like, responsibly. G give me my no. card back, you know, and I, that's like it's frustrating, right, with that. But um, but back to the whole, back to the whole, you know, the the pressure of all that. It there was one point where, after everyone's telling me stop, don't do YouTube anymore, you know, just cut back instead of doing three videos, do two. I'm like, y you don't get it. No, so they don't not, get it. I'm not gonna waste my time. No one understands that because the people. All the people that have told me that were never in my shoes. Don't give advice to somebody if you've never experienced the thing you're giving advice on. I always go with don't don't take criticism for people you wouldn't go to for advice. Yeah. Like I'd never go to someone who doesn't make content. I'd never go to them for content advice. Which is also know. hard because we're such like a, a niche 
person mm -hmm. how do we say that like it's like a niche career yeah that, yeah like, you can't it's, really go to people, right right and like it's and it's so hard to go to people and like, are they going to give me good advice? Yeah. Are they going to like be gatekeepy with anything? Like you did, it's so hard to know in this industry and it, it's so hard to like, then you, again, like you have all these people who are like, I'll be an agent. I'll be a manager who say, I have all the answers. I know, but so you really, you really don't. There, like no I, I had a manager that convinced me that I needed to hire this company for an aesthetic remake makeover. And I paid like $4,000 for these people to do an entire aesthetics makeover. And I told them, I said, you know, I love the color teal and I love, you know, like teals and navies and gold and like maybe some sparkles. Like that's really my vibe. Um, I would love to see what you come up with. I'm kind of trying to leave the just a teacher kind of sphere. I want to be more than just a teacher. So I don't want like teacher aesthetic. I want like me aesthetic. I want it to be about me as a person. I might still do teacher content, but I don't want that to be the focus. Mm -hmm. And like they come back to me with like, the most, like, I was downright offended when I saw what they came to me with. Like, little icons that looked like they belong in second grade school sticker books of, like, apples in schoolyards and, like, bright pinks and blues. And, like, like literally, I'm like, did you even listen to anything that I just said? And, like, part of me is, like, feeling like an absolute Karen, be, like, telling them I hated it and being so mad about it. But at the same time... I just paid you thousands of dollars to make something that had these colors that I want, this vibe, and like you didn't listen to me at all. Like this is four thousand dollars, and they're like, "Well, we already did so much work." I'm like, "But I, this isn't what I paid for. Right. I'm sorry, you have to do it again." So then they redid it. Um, they 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 ended up redoing it. They're working on it, and they ended up giving me like a banner. But that was it, and I was still waiting on the rest of it. And I'm I'm waiting like four months at this point. Wow. Four months for the rest of this stuff. I've only paid them half at this point. I'm mm. not paying them the rest until I get the yeah, rest of the of assets. Course not. Yeah. Um, as you should PSDs never do. PSDs and all. And I was so frustrated that none of my like my banner didn't match any of my profile pictures yet, or any of my icons, or anything. So what I did was I like took a photo in my backyard that my mom took, and I went on like. Canva oh, and I put thanks mom <laughs> and I literally just put like a teal background on it and I just used a little background remover and I at least so it would at least like match it wasn't what I was using yet but and I just put the banner up and whatever mind you I've already paid two thousand dollars the only asset that I've actually gotten from them was this banner I'm supposed to get bios and profile pictures and little icons for Instagram all these they, things they that I haven't gotten them yet as they were doing it she sent me the most Chat hostile, GPT? no, the okay. <laughs> hostile email talking about how you posted all these assets and you haven't paid for them and blah, 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 and you're so unprofessional, blah, blah, blah. I said, excuse me? I've paid $2,000. Yeah, all I've gotten is a something. banner. All I've gotten was a banner. That's crazy. My banner is included in that $2,000 I yeah, paid for. Yeah, definitely. Are you referring to my profile picture that I did yeah, on Canva? Too. Are you saying that your work is so minuscule that you're comparing what you do to what I did in five seconds on Canva? Because that's where that, do you not even realize that you didn't do that work? Like, my mom took that picture. I did, I'm not paying you for that. Well, well, I don't understand why you're saying, so, oh, I didn't know. What do you mean you didn't know? Yeah. And you still owe me this, 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 Sounds this. Sounds like a fly by night company. And like, I've never been, I've, I've always been that person that's like, oh, the waiter got my order wrong. It's fine. I'll eat it. It's okay. I'm not mad. But like having to not do that and having to put my foot down and being like, no, I paid this amount of money for this service and you are not delivering it. Or I paid this amount of money. I've only gotten this asset and heck yeah, I'm going to use it because I paid for it already yeah. and you still owe me X, Y, and Z. And you're going to have it to me by the end of this, this week. Yeah. Like that was really hard for me to do. That was like one of the first times I really stood up to myself. But again, yeah. if my, if the manager at the time didn't tell me that I needed it, I could have made everything that they were making myself on Canva since apparently it was comparable, you know, yeah. like it just, it's just another example of like this industry can be so 
predatory yeah. and gross and disgusting. Yeah, I know, I know. But do you think there are any other misconceptions about being like full-time content creators, full-time YouTubers, like anything else that the public either just like really doesn't know or doesn't get or understand? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I don't think they understand um, the the time commitment. Mostly, like there was one lady in the Bahamas, her nieces or nephew or someone. Yeah, they watch you on YouTube. She goes, "That that's cool that you do that. Is this like a part time job?" And when she <laughs> said, and, and like, I, I naturally just don't get offended because I know like there's just so many just stupid people out there that just say stuff that's out of pocket. You're like, ah, whatever. I don't get bothered by it. But when she said that, I was like. Does my stuff really look like I don't spend a lot of time on it? Cause I'm I, I, I I'm doing more hours than you and your husband combined. Like I, I guarantee it. That and yeah, that's like, frustrating. Oh my gosh, and so it's just like, if this is how I'm viewed, and this was then before like, you know, uh, uh, shorts and and again I don't I don't mean to like crap on shorts. That's okay. Just, I won't take the, it personally. The only reason. Um, why I think I have such a hatred towards like not hatred but like towards shorts and short form is because the people that I have witnessed just so much laziness. They're just like, oh, I don't, I don't want to put in a lot of time into making a video. I just want to like make it real quick and then put it out and go on about my day. And I can't relate to that because I, that. I have so much passion built up with creating content. You can't do what I do in a half a day. You can't do what I do with a little bit of time. And so it's just like naturally when I don't like jive with somebody or something, I generally tend to cut it out of my life. Like I, I don't believe like, oh, well, it's a balance. No, nah, just I, like, right. I don't agree with that. I don't want to have anything to do with it. Like, that's just my personality. It's who I am. I think just because of the way like social media has turned out, I would be like embarrassed to tell people like, oh yeah, I'm an influencer or content creator. Like I, I don't say that for the longest time. I would just say, I have a production company. And they're like, what does that mean? Yeah. I'm like, I, I produce stuff. And they're like, what do you produce it for? And I would change the subject. Even like I've had people say, oh, you should teach people and do classes, a master class. And this and that. Like, I don't want to sell this to you because I feel like if you worked hard enough, you can probably find out everything I know just by listening and researching. And there's tons of other people who have already talked about it. So I'm not going to feel comfortable selling this to you. You know, I well, just also, can't do my, that. Well, Avery has asked me a lot of times. And like, he's like, why don't you like teach people how to do social media and offer classes? And I, you know, if people feel like they want to make it into a career, like a, a lucrative like thing, your hat's off to you. But I don't want to say, oh, yeah, pay me this money and I'll teach you what I know. When I know that, like, a lot of going viral is, like, a lot of luck. Luck. Like, I don't, I would feel so gross to make people pay for like a chance that maybe their stuff will catch an algorithm. Cause again, there's no secret. No, I know. And I know that. And I don't think that I could in good conscience genuinely tell people, oh yeah, I can make you go viral. Yeah, give me your money. No. No, but there's people out there that can, that, that try to promise stuff like yes. that. And, and it drives me nuts. And I know one of them. So I'm just gonna put them on blast. One of them, I helped gain 100,000 subscribers by shouting them out. Like the 100,000 subscribers 100% of those 100,000 subscribers were my subscribers. And they had the nerve, years later, two years later, whatever, whatever it is, to try to sell something. And I watched the ad and they said, this is my channel and I got 100,000 subscribers on it and I can teach you how to do exactly no. this, no problem. And I was like, what? Are you I hate kidding? That. That's so Are gross. Are you kidding? You are like, you're, you're a disgusting person. It's like, wild to me. The, like, there's so yes, much of that on no. social media. There's so much. And there's people and who are like. And that's also why I try to distance myself. Like, I don't. Mm -hmm. I'm like embarrassed. And there to are still people do who are like, media follow me and I'll it. teach you how to go viral. And I'm like, but if you. if <sighs> It doesn't. I get frustrated just make make thinking sense about to it. Because I'm like, but you don't go viral. Yeah. Like, I know. <laughs> like, why do those people exist? It's, it's not like, real. Well, like, no one actually knows the secrets. It's not real. Yeah. Or I was. I was um, at an event, and I, I was at, an, at a friend's event, and I kind of put my foot in my mouth, and I'm like, sorry, but I'm also not sorry. Like, I, we were there for a friend's event, and uh, someone's cousin came in and was, like, hanging out and was like, oh, what do you do? And so I was like, oh, 
I do YouTube and her eyes got big and she's like, I have so many questions and blah, blah, blah. And I've been trying to grow my own accounts and I've been following all these people who like say they can teach me how to go viral, but like nothing's working. And I said, oh, I, I can't really stand those accounts. Like there's not really a secret. Like people who say, oh, I can teach you how to go viral. They yeah. don't actually know. Like they have no idea what they're talking about. Yeah. And the room kind of got quiet and I was like, what? And apparently her cousin like does that for a living for companies. And I was like, oh, and I didn't, I, I, I like didn't backtrack because like I still stand by it, yeah. you know, like you, there is no secret. The, you well, can't... the only real secret is just make good content. Yes. And, but, at the end of the, but that but, doesn't mean you're but, going to go viral. But here's the issue. You have a chance. People, you say that and then people don't understand it like they you hear they make good content is. but and they're like okay well i see this guy making this content so i'm going to make this content but just but that's that's not how it works no. because that doesn't mean it's unique to you and it doesn't mean that it's what you're passionate about like these are all factors that make a difference just because you're making the same kind like just because you're going and making teacher skits yeah doesn't mean yeah. that your light the, the light is shining in your eyes there, there's because gonna you're be a hundred variables that we don't know what right what they even are right like it, it's just it could be that they're lacking the county content. bricks in the back end. <laughs> <laughs> they might be the star. No, I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> no, it's like you never. You, it's it's not it's not the same. But even like for me, one of the biggest things and the biggest like stressors and demotivators in the content world is the people who go out of their way to like troll and be mean. Yeah. Like you know, I I know it's so yeah. different for so many different uh, marginalized groups. But like I grew up in a Jewish household, mm -hmm. um, and I it's so sad that I even have to like say this out loud. But I genuinely take a, an hour and prepare myself before I post anything that has to do with, like, Hanukkah or anything, like, really? in, anything at all. And I just prepare for what I know is going to be in my DMs, That's whether crazy. it be Holocaust jokes or just anti-Semitism, like, like the, the, the point of kind of hatred. And, you know, I get... A different kind of DMs and hate and things like that just for being a woman on the internet, you That's know? That's crazy, though. Like, like, I... They got nothing else better to do with their day. It's crazy. That's, I don't understand. It's, it's wild What's to me. Motivation? And my mom always says that those who go out of their way to make others miserable yeah. are just projecting the own misery they feel with themselves. Yeah. And I try really hard to hold on to that. Um, and, you know, it, it, like, works, but at the same time, you know, it's never going to feel good, you yeah. know, seeing people, like... I want you to die or yeah. I there there are a couple people who every month will literally just summarize the content that they hated the most that I post and will just tell me about why I am the scum of the earth why I am a smear on the planet why I'm taking up too much oogen and it's so like you have to laugh while so you, you don't have cry. this job that makes you happy. They're likely at a job that they're miserable at. Right. And the, a lot of right. it's jealousy. A lot of it. It's is so jealousy. funny because someone's like, one of them is like, I'm. I don't even remember what he does. It's so insignificant. Like, I'm a doctor and I don't have to go and be stupid on the internet. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> that's fine. Like. I don't care. <laughs> Whatever. What does that have to do with me or like, and this content? I it's literally. Irrelevant. I literally made this one video and it was literally just a scientific fact, right? It literally was just this idea that um, reindeers, like the actual animals, um, male reindeers lose their antlers in the fall, whereas female antlers or female reindeer lose their antlers in the spring because um, they just, you know, it, they shed them at different times of the year, meaning that in a lot of the Christmas depiction of reindeers, mm. if they have antlers, they're women. Slay. <laughs> the men who were so This was a short angry. Or I, yeah, it yeah. was literally like a 10 second silly video. I saw a meme on Facebook and I was like, that would make a funny video. And the kind of you're ruining Christmas and <laughs> you're yeah, you're ruining this for children. What child is gonna be upset? No, no child. That no, they no, don't no. care. They, they, they've probably never been around a child and they don't remember <laughs> their own childhood and no, they don't want it's crazy. kids. Crazy or like the kind of like men who were genuinely pissed off and like sent me death threats. That's so sad. over reindeer being female. Wild, like I um, that to me, that's like the worst part of social media. 
It is, and that's why for a long time, I've I've struggled with, you know, I'm an adult, right? Mm-hmm. So there's times when, obviously, I'm having adult conversations, adult humor. We're laughing. Right. I'm like, I'd love to put this in a video, but I don't, because I'm making content for families and. You right. Know, there's generally younger audiences, right? And there's so many times I'm like, man, I wish I had sometimes like uh, the younger audience and an older audience. The older audience is toxic. And they're mean. They're so mean. We don't have much toxicity in our fan base because it's younger kids. Because hate is learned. Kid, that's what I'm saying. Hate is learned. And so even my son just the other day, Mike, he goes, don't you wish sometimes you had like an older audience you can connect to? And I'm like, nope. Because that's when you start getting death threats. That's when you start getting doxes to your house. Mm-mm. That's when you start like experiencing these things that no innocent child wants to do. No. And most can't do. You know? And it's like, and then you would, you would think that the parents are most likely leading by example. And the parents don't want to either. Um, and so I, I'm... I'm blessed. My audience <laughs> Not is... that all of the Doreen fan base, I'm saying. No, yeah. Thank God our fan base is who they are. You know, yes. It's like, My yeah. fan base is 70% women. And I love that. Yeah. Because I don't... I, like, I don't understand the dudes that will just go in your comment section and, like, make comments about your body. And I'm like, please don't comment on my body. There are kids here. Like, because I, I do have young and old like, I do have yeah. a much younger and a much older audience. Like, yeah. I have a very wide range. Please don't comment on my body. Yeah. There are kids here. Well, it's just a compliment. I don't want that. I don't yeah. want your compliment. I don't need you to comment on yeah. my body. I got a husband for that. I can see I you were making you. content. You're like, I like this shirt because it contours and it does yes. this. Makes my hit. Like, if you're talking about this stuff, but if you're not if, right. eliciting it, like, if why is I it? I made content that was clearly very purposefully about, like, that yeah in that kind of sphere yeah. okay but like as tar- tarzan always likes to tell me tarzan told me one time he goes i really respect you because you choose to dress frumpy <laughs> <laughs> wow, he goes, thanks, you, i said oh <laughs> he goes it sounds like it's not a compliment but it <laughs> is he goes in a world where like people are making money off of their bodies which like for me I, there's not the girl you get your bag however you want yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I do not judge anyone who does anything yeah, like yeah, that personal preference but for me yeah. it's just not for me That's, i clearly am not making content about my body yeah. or about beauty or anything like that yeah and i even so like i still get well when are you when are you gonna make a schmoly spans yeah. When are you, you should definitely sign up for this because I would pay. I don't care. Yeah. I don't care that you would pay money to see my body. You're not entitled to it. Yeah. And like hats off to the women who feel confident enough to do that. You make your bag queen. For me, that's like, that's like the worst part of social media is the people that go out of their way to like put people down or make people's life harder. Like, do you think that there are like, are there any other misconceptions or anything that you can think of or any last last thoughts that you want to leave people with about like what it's really like to be a content creator full time understanding that it, it's a lot of work it's dedication yeah. it's uh your your heart has to be in the right place for the longevity anyone could do anything in a short period of time but um yeah like what, what what's the are you gonna get famous and or money and then gonna instantly change who you are yeah. No one's signing up for that. No one wants to see that. That's you know my I mean? biggest flex is um I was at my my friend Lauren's bachelorette party and we were at this piano bar um in at, at one of the beaches. And uh, she wanted to go to the bathroom, and so like I took her because like I don't I don't drink as much of a, as our other friends. Like I, I don't drink very much at all, especially because Avery doesn't drink, so I'm, I just don't. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess a fan saw me upstairs and followed us to the bathroom, and Lauren was a little sloshed <laughs> and, and so this this woman comes in she goes oh I watch your content and it was very sweet and Lauren I've known Lauren since we were like 12 right we've been friends since we were 12 years old and she goes let me tell you about Rebecca and I was like oh no <laughs> where is it she goes Rebecca's been my friend like, wait gotta go live for, all right now continue for almost like 12 15 years and she's still the same person she was 12 years ago as she is today. And I like that to yeah. me has always like I learned she doesn't even remember it the next day. But to me 
that meant so much and that was the most validating thing any of my friends could yeah. have ever said to me and like she was completely wasted so you know it's something like that she really meant and really thought of like that's how she felt true in her heart and like to me that is always my biggest flex that my friends who have known me for 15 years yeah. still recognize me as the same person and that it's I good. was and, and that it didn't nothing's changed to me yeah and i've heard that from only a few yeah. creators. There's only a few people. Like, I heard that about Anwar, and I love Anwar. Yeah. You ever seen Anwar? No, yeah. I haven't met him. Never, but you know his content? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And so, like, he was just cool, like, me just sitting there talking to him. I don't even know if he knew who, I, you know, what I did or whatever. But, yeah, like, that that is that is refreshing. I love that. And, yeah, it doesn't I think, matter to everybody, but it matters to us. That's the yeah. thing. It's like, and, of course, some things change. Like, for example, like, I'll change in the way where... My guard is up a yes, lot more. Yes, my guard is up. And I'll stand up for myself more. Yeah. Oh, I've always, I've never had a problem with that. I have. <laughs> <laughs> I've been a doormat for quite a while. Oh, no, never me. The social media stuff doesn't really matter in the end. Like, you can be Jimmy Donaldson and then do this your entire life, and then you're going to look back and be like, bro, what, what did I actually do? I you say that all the time. Where's your roots? Who's going to say anything nice about you? Because anybody that has anything nice to say about Mr. Beast, like his friend, like his, like his fans, this fans don't know him as a person. They yeah. do not know him at all. There's, they don't. And so those opinions don't matter. I have, a, I have a friend. She's one of the smartest friends that I have. She's trying to cure staph infection at Duke. She's getting her wow. Ph.D. I have another friend who works in, like, clinical trials to get, like, real medications that will help people, like, survive, you know, and, like, live normal lives and, like, live with illnesses and, like, get those clinical trials set up. Like, I say all the time that, you know, like, I love what I do and there's a lot of hardships in it and yeah. I work really hard. But at the end of the day, what I do really doesn't matter in the way that like curing staph infection does yeah exactly and like I know, the way like, <laughs> perspective is so important like we ch we make people smile and yeah. we get we're entertainment but we aren't which is we're, important we're, the yes, endorphins yes and other, it does the, matter like i'm not knocking what we do like yeah. but you know what i mean no like, i know we're I, not, I was just thinking that sometimes i have the perspective a is matt is yeah important. like sometimes when i start talking about like my problems or problems that exist and like what i do and this and that and i'm talking to someone that doesn't understand it it's like not a content creator right i try to stop myself I'm like stop this because they don't they it, don't like people sometimes see content creators and they're like oh you have it made you don't your problems aren't real problems yeah, like, like, hey, look, the end of the day like no matter how straight. successful like someone's life is you know they're the grass isn't always greener you know, no, and like, yeah. I, I love my job. The grass is green where you water it. Yes. I love my job. I love this career. It exhausts me sometimes. It makes my mental health spiral. But at the end of the day, this career is the career for me. And I'm very thankful for it. That doesn't mean that my life is all rosy. That doesn't mean that I'm not sobbing on my kitchen floor because I'm so stressed out. Or someone is, like, threatening to come find me. And, like, you know, like, we, we still do have very real issues but at the end of the day, even with through all the craziness that we've talked about, like I'm still very thankful and feel very privileged that this is what I call my job. That's when you have to stop and look at it because it's so easy to always complain about the negative. I mean, it's so yes. easy for someone to go online and leave a negative review. Most positive people don't want to go on and leave the positive review. They're like, I like it. Well, I don't care. Like, whatever. Right. But the negative people are like, I got to go online and tell people. Like, everything's like negative. Like, everything, just the negativity that, that feeds off of... But that's uh, why I think it's so important. Like, when it comes to our job, people only see the positive. And I think that's why this is so important to really just, like, you know, they see the positive from our job every day. And so I think just, you know, bringing attention to, hey... Let's talk about the negatives yeah. is important just to give that perspective because we don't have to go and tell them how cool it was to go to the White House. Like, yeah. it was so cool to go to the White House last year, but they saw me do that. Yeah. I don't feel like I need to rub that in anyone's faces. Yeah. I more so want to explain, like, hey, and then the next day I was having a mental breakdown because, like, X, Y, Z. What what about all the mental breakdowns it took you to, to get, get to, to that the White point. House? Yes. And so the problem I have sometimes about talking, and, and I do, I've talked about this in, in a handful of videos, but, again, sometimes I, I don't like talking about it because so many people can't read between the lines and can't see, and they'll say, like, wait, so all these this time that you were talking about when you were upset and having a hard time, you were making videos and you were smiling and laughing and this and that, and it's just like, 
I, I actually am the happiest when I am yeah. recording. While we are super privileged to have this job, like we really do appreciate every single person that's like listening to this and watching this. Like the people who have stuck around for three years for me, for 12 years yeah. with you, even the people who've only found us in the last couple of years, like we do appreciate you very much. And we, we really don't want anyone to think that like we're just here Oh, our life's so hard, keep watching us. Like, we really just kind of want to give everyone a little bit of a perspective of what it is that we really experience and some of the things behind closed doors. And we love what we do and we'll keep doing it, but just want everyone to know that, like, being a content creator is not like. 10 years being a content creator is like 30 all. years at another time. Yeah, job. like, I already feel like, myself. People aging. don't understand that. It's a lot of stress. And, like, you always have to, you know, like, I could go on about cancellations and things like maybe yeah. we'll do like a, another episode another time <laughs> on like cancel culture. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, that's great. I know there's so many times I want to say something I'm like just delete it. There's no point. I think that's kind of like the I actually think that's a really perfect mentality to really like close on the idea that like social media isn't real life. The, the grass is greener where you water it. Mm. And this idea that, like, not everything that you see online is also real. Well, yeah, no. thank you so much yeah. for hanging out yeah, with me welcome. today. And I, I really appreciate this. This is, like, the first podcast you ever did. How yep. was it? it was did you, first, did it you hate good. it? It was, no, it was I, awful. No, I didn't hate <laughs> I just, like, I feel like I'm, like, tough for these sort of things because I'm all over the place. That's okay. So, I'm like, also all over the place. No, so it's fine. I, 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 I could tell. Uh, I, yeah, yeah, and that's okay. <laughs> and that's I'm like two all over the place people. Who's, this is going to be like the longest together? episode we have. Poor Avery has to edit it. And thank you guys for joining us today. Hope you thank have you. a great rest of thank your day you. and hope to thank see you all next week. Later. Bye my lovelies.